Hello, and welcome to another episode of Scavenger Life. This is episode number 461 at scavengerlife.com. So this week, uh, we've been talking a lot on the forum or just in general about sourcing, uh, you know, yep. as, as this virus and the lockdown kind of continues. And even though some places are starting to open back up, it's very kind of haphazard. It's also like a store may be open, but are you willing to go there? You right. Know, all, all these things. And there was a lot of like, I think... I think if you learned how to sell online through like buying a course or, you know, you learn through like a course and, you know, there was a time when, yeah, it's like, you know, you go to Goodwill and you buy these, these certain brands and, you know, Thursday is tag day. Like it kind of was a one, two, three, uh, a recipe. Sure. And doable. I think now's a time when natural born scavengers are going to shine because this is when all rules are off. Yeah. And this is when we all just have to figure out how to find stuff like a real true scavenger. It's not normal times like, where you just go to stores. Like, I don't know when the easy go to Goodwill and just source your stuff on the third state tag day, like when that is going to come back and, uh, right. you know, what that's going to look like. I don't know. Um, I just know that for us, we have to start being really creative in how we get new inventory. Right. You know, thankfully, we had kind of bought a bunch of stuff kind of before all this stuff hit that we had been eating on. We're just eating through that. Um, It's going to go away, though. (laughs) But it's interesting. uh, On the forum, though, the people were uh, really stepping up. And, you know, it's going to be different where you are. There's Facebook Marketplace, I guess. Yep. You know, uh, Craigslist. Buying on eBay, buying online at a local um, um, auction houses. Yeah, like know? there, there are still you know like auction houses are are smart and they're right. doing online, and then you just go pick up your boxes, which is cool. Um, it is hard to shop that way, though. You know, yeah. for sure. We were looking at an online auction last night, and I'm like. You know, I can't really, like, this looks cool, but I'd really love to hold it in my hand to just yeah. make sure it's the right quality and, you and know. Is it a worth an hour drive there right. and an hour drive back to exactly. buy, yeah, kind of like a bunch of junk? It's kind of right. nice being at an auction in person yeah. because you can go into a box and look at it and be like, I'll pay 30 bucks for that because it's just one thing. Yeah. When it's just like one or two f- photos of a box and you can't see underneath, it's tough. Um, yeah, but yeah, I mean, I think you know this is when kind of it's got to kick in for us for anyone out there right now. It's just like, are you a scavenger? You know that. Sur- I mean, scavenging isn't like this isn't like a hustle. It's like a, a yeah. survival instinct for many of us. You know, like this right. is when we have to get creative. I think also like a lot of people listening to this are always like this. This is something I was talking about the other day where, you know, people are all asking, how is life going to change? And how is life different than it was, you know, two months ago or whatever. And I'm like, you know, as scavengers, as people who did go through 2008 depression um, and beyond, you know, before that, you know, you're, you're, you're getting food in bulk, you're buying cheap stuff, you're searching for stuff on the side of the road, you know, you're like, this is not how most people live their lives anyway. So we're already in that sphere of like alternative living and like alternative ways of looking at the world and right. making money. I mean, I, so I, I it, will say it feels different, but not that much different. Yeah. I mean, I will say a lot of it. I, I don't know how other people are, but I think like, you know, then the, when the two of us talk about how we grew up, I think if you grow up like a working class yeah. where, you know, you have enough on the table, like everyone's fine, but, uh, there's nothing beyond that. There's not like, a lot it. of money. Yeah. Like you're not, your parents aren't giving you credit cards or a lot of money cash. You kind of all just learn how to be a scavenger, you know? Right. And exactly. so you just kind of know what to do. Um, you know how to be creative, finding cool stuff. And I think that's how a yeah. lot of people who like we talk to, 
in this community, you know, I feel like a lot of people's stories are the same. I grew up going to thrift stores, right. buying cool clothes for as myself. Yeah. And now that I'm older, I realize like, oh, I have a good eye. I know how to find stuff. It's cheap. And yeah. wow, this jacket that, you know, I was buying for $5, I can sell for $50. Like, yeah. wow, that's actually pretty cool. That's you know? like a way to make a living. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, right now, life is very bizarre. The fact that you cannot, you know, most businesses and yeah. churches and thrift stores and estate sales, I mean, it's all closed. So that's that's obviously not ideal for scavengers. Those sure. are normal places for us to buy things. But I do I wonder, you know, some people are really good. They go to estate sales. That's not really what we do because it's not really just, big in our yeah. area. But, you know, they've develop relationships with those right. estate sales. Exactly. I wonder, can you like contact them and be like, can I just buy... Can I still buy that stuff? Can I just like pull up behind your business and just like buy a bunch of boxes of stuff? Right. I wonder if you could do that with a thrift store. Like, mm. I know you're getting a lot of stuff. Can I just come over and you just load just my car like up and I'll... load some stuff up. Give you 300 bucks or something. I mean... You know? I mean, this is where yeah. the non-traditional ways of communicating need to happen yeah you know? um i mean even on the forum there's one guy uh i think this is a like winchester 38 yeah. he and his wife they moved uh they're in canada and they just moved anyway that, that's not part of the story but they sell on ebay yeah but they also sell on amazon yeah they found like some niche products that they sell and they say it's like going like gangbusters on and, Amazon. And, yeah. and I've got to say, like that's also a scavenger thing. I guess they have found some wholesale distributor that they've made a, a relationship with that they're able to get on, you know, a bunch of quantity, and that other people haven't come into their uh, a market. And right, so, which is rare on Amazon. Yeah, I mean, it sounds incredible. Like, his uh, numbers are incredible. Like, you know, I sold $50,000 worth of stuff. Uh, yeah. You know, I think he is nets, I think he said nine or $10,000 a month. That which is crazy. Amazing. I mean, you know, it, it's funny when someone says they sell, I, I, I forgot the n a number, but it's like $50,000. But then you got to do all the costs. Yeah. And, fees so yeah, yeah yeah but still if you make nine or ten thousand dollars net that's, and that's fba that's or great. that was that's fba fba yeah he says that they spend again i should know the uh, numbers but it was something like you know they spend four to eight thousand dollars in inventory costs which is that's a lot we're not that risky you know yeah. um and then they mail in and they're doing boxes they mail it in now, Every if they're day. in Canada, are they mailing it somewhere in Canada? Or they're no, mailing it to like Wisconsin. He he says that he's, I guess, he's developed a a relationship, and that's again a good scavenger. Oh. It's all about a relationships. Wherever he crosses over, mm -hmm. I guess he's got all the right permits, and mm -hmm. he knows how to do it correctly. Mm -hmm. And he, they know him, and so he drives over, gives it to the American Pale. Postman, and then it's amazing. Uh, yeah, so but but that's another way of scavenging in on even on Amazon is that ability to because maybe a lot of people who sell on Amazon I don't know if the people do uh, a retail arbitrage that might not be as easy to do anymore because it's harder to go to Target and buy stuff, you know. Well, there's that. And also what I have heard, I don't know if this is still true, is that FBA was not accepting things that were not essential. Right. Like you weren't allowed to send, you know, random retail arbitrage stuff that wasn't like... iPhone cases. Supplies. Yeah, it's right. like sheet sets or whatever right. you're buying. It's like... Commodity items. Yeah, so I, so that's got to yeah. be tough. But the, that that's actually the amazing yeah. thing about eBay. You can sell anything. You know, there's no yeah. restriction. You're like, I'm selling all kinds yeah. of stuff on eBay. We yeah. also, um, I mean, one thing, even if you're a longtime scavenger, is to go back into your own stuff. We've actually been going through kind of doing spring cleaning. Right. And we don't even have that much stuff. And we still have a lot of stuff. I still have stuff I'm so selling. So <laughs> we've been selling stuff just off of our porch on Facebook. Yep, I've list. sold a few things on Facebook. Uh, and it's good, you know, like... Even if you're a, I'm a minimalist. Like if you a, still have stuff. That's a hot. It's a new thing. You, you, we just you still have stuff. And now they're, like know. I'm looking around our living room. Like, oh, I should <laughs> like, sell that. Like, what why, can you why, sell? why do I have that? Yeah. Uh, so yeah. yeah. 
so I feel people's pain about sourcing, especially if you're new and you were really into that whole thing about like being able just to go to Goodwill yeah, because they're everywhere. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. That sucks. But it is But possible. for now, look, like I was saying before, go on eBay. Find some people selling bulk stuff. That's the great yeah. – honestly, like I love eBay because you're dealing with an individual. It's not like buying stuff on Amazon. Anytime we need supplies or anything that we're looking for – for whatever reason, for ourselves, for our rentals, for the renovations we're doing. I'm, I am trying to do it on eBay because I'm like, I want to buy this hardware item from someone that bought out a, a hardware store instead of like buying it new on Amazon and then waiting two months for it because mm-hmm. right now stuff is really backed up. So yeah. I've been trying really hard to be like, oh, I need this thing. Let me just see if someone has it on eBay. Yeah. I'll I'll message them directly, ask if they're shipping soon. If they write back to me, I will buy it from I them. I think if you're much better at that than I am, I, I do fall into that just like, just buy it on Amazon. It gets here. Look. Free shipping. I, I get it. But you're really good about purposely taking the time because it does take more time. time. Yeah. Going on eBay, trying to find someone that's selling it for cheap. But then... It you especially if it's a commodity item, it you have to uh, research it. Yeah, are they in America, right. and not in China? And right. even if they're in America, are they a real American a real seller, shipper? or is it just like a PO box that a Chinese shipper, right. which happens all the time, and then it still takes five weeks? Well, that's the thing right now is you know I I was trying to buy something on Amazon and they were like we'll be shipping in you know a month and a half and I'm like well. Pfft. First of all, I can't wait that long and I would like to have this thing. So that was the number one reason why I went on to eBay. Because I was like, someone in West Virginia who's 150 miles from me might have this. And they did. Right. So how do you tell if someone is selling in America is actually like... A real person. A real person based here. Um, Well, it helps to look at the photos because if it's not... Now, catalog photos can be real people, obviously. Yeah. But if it looks like it was taken in someone's workshop and then I message them and they message me back and they're right. like, yep, I'm going to ship tomorrow. Yeah. I'm 100 miles from you. Right. It should get there in a day or two. Then you're like, okay, right. this is a real person who has a real store who's really running an eBay business, just like us. Like right. We message people as fast as possible. So just going back to uh, scavenging. So some people are saying they're going on Facebook marketplace and yeah finding lots of stuff sure are you seeing that like um i don't know if those people live in like urban areas because i do not see i see right. mostly <laughs> absolute garbage on yeah. facebook but in, look in, I, i'm really in not our, a local area. i'm not really looking like right. i'm trying to sell stuff on facebook i'm right. not trying to buy stuff and honestly the times i've tried to buy stuff and you message people you either never get a message back or they type something that's yeah. unintelligible and you're like, what right. the hell? I do wonder when people say that because I guess I haven't really probed on the forum when people say they're buying big lots of stuff. I wonder what people are selling, like what are they selling? on Facebook, a yeah. marketplace. I wonder if it's just people I don't know. in urban areas doing spring cleaning and instead of taking it to the Goodwill, they like, just like have a thing. they're like, I've got, you know... 28 bags of clothes, you know. The thing that surprises me so much these days about it's uh, Craigslist too and Facebook. I swear to you, I cannot understand why people think I'm going to deliver stuff to their house, yeah. which is um, <laughs> 75 miles away. I know. You really Every just, single time. Hey, can so you meet mad. me um, halfway, which right. is 75 miles? No. Yeah, you're so mad about You know, that. I will say this. <laughs> I I sold something on Facebook a couple of days ago and I shipped it to the person. Mm-hmm. They paid me on PayPal yeah. and I shipped it to them. Right. And then there was another item which actually had lo- it did get picked up locally, but I was willing to ship it to a couple different people. Hmm. So people are starting to be like, "Well, I can't really pick this up." Does Facebook give that as an option, or that's just a private it, conversation? It, it will give you an option if you've sold enough stuff. You hmm. can like have shipping as a thing. I haven't sold enough stuff, apparently. I don't have that option So on my that app. buyer was just willing to trust yep. that you were going to do it. And the good thing is they paid me through PayPal. Hmm. So if I didn't print out a label or give them any kind of reassurance, they could say I didn't through PayPal, that, right? I didn't receive this. But did, they had full tracking. So Did um, 
does Facebook have its own like uh, payment system? I don't. You're asking the wrong person. Okay. I think so. You can like request money. I'm I don't know how you the get best that. Person I, know. I don't know how you get that money. Like, I don't know how I can offer shipping. Um, I think you have to like sell enough stuff that it shows up on your app, right. and then I don't know how you get paid. Like, I. Right. It it seems like such an opaque thing that Facebook's like not revealing i'm like what well, how yeah. does this work mm. which is ridiculous yeah i mean right now we just it use facebook as as, as like craigslist, craigslist alternative yeah. yeah all right so let's talk about ebay this week so manage payments it sounds like us and a lot of people got a message from ebay uh saying that we have to sign up to register for managed payments by july 15th so what is so yeah, here's the deal. That's confusing, right? So th- w- when you when they say uh, it register, it sounds like we have to go through the process of like putting in our bank account and like our financial information so we can like connect to this new thing. Supposedly, if you register for it, you actually don't get started in it until the end of July. But because they don't make us register till July 15th, I think we're not going to even register until the final time we can. Because I don't want to register now. And then they're like, oh, by the way, now you're now in our, our new program. Right, like you're, you know? you've been enrolled. Like, yeah. So, yeah. It, so it's because it's, they say, to ensure that your sales continue uninterrupted and no restrictions are applied to your account, please be sure to register before your account is activated starting late July. So, mm-hmm. but. Hmm. Right. If that July sounds f- not too bad, but to me, if July fifteenth is the deadline, then we're just going to wait till the, the very end because there doesn't really seem to be any upside that I can tell. You know? Yeah, um, I just I look at this moment. If I if I have interrupted payments, that's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, look, other people are on it. I really haven't seen anyone on the forum who has uh, used it for a long time now really say anything about it so i would love to hear people's opinion i mean look it reminds me of payments that you get from every other online whatever yeah amazon man amazon takes two weeks to give you your money direct deposit airbnb same thing you just have like direct deposits you know it takes like four days to get it it's not like paypal paypal is awesome but that stuff's going away for eBay, and we just have to deal with it. That's yeah. just what it is. From what I'm, my understanding is, so we'll attach our bank account, and then just yeah. when we sell something, the money will just automatically be transferred. But it's like you said, it's not an instant transfer just because the American banking is so weirdly slow. Yeah, it's like a two-day break Now, in is, it, is it every single transaction, or do they wait like – Till the end of the week. I, I wonder if you we can change it. Like, just yeah. just transfer this at the end of the week. Like, like, don't be, like, pinging my, you know, account every, yeah every you know, $10 sale. I don't right. know. I guess we'll see. You know, and then do the fees, do they pull all the fees out at the same at time? Moment. Or do the fees all rack up and then you get this big bill at the end of the month? So right, we, which is it, Amazon. I'm trying to remember Amazon. I feel like they they pulled the fees out before they depart, which for bookkeeping honestly is so much nicer because you're just like, I mean, obviously with eBay you can just deduct that payment that will like month payment, um, but you know it's kind of nice to be like, this is what went into my account. They already took their fees, you know, whatever. So. And supposedly with shipping, what I've been told is that you can choose. How you want to pay it? You can pay it with PayPal. Right. You can pay it with a credit card. Which, thank goodness, because then you can get points. And that excites a lot of people because yeah. then you can just put your credit card, not have to empty out your PayPal account yeah. every day, and just yeah, pay for it in your credit card. You could better pay it back at the end of the month. So it doesn't, uh, <laughs> but I, I can see a lot of sellers getting in over their head because they. But people want money. the points because, right. like, right now it just comes out of PayPal and you get nothing I for mean, spending. I mean, people spend tens of thousands right. of dollars I on mean, postage. I think we do what a couple thousand dollars a month in shipping. Yeah, you know, so, so you're like, yeah, I want right. the, that percentage back plus those whatever yeah. travel points that I'll never use now that there's a pandemic. So but still, you know, it's just one of those things as an eBay. 
seller. I feel like we haven't had a big change in a long right. time. So it sounds this like... This is a pretty big change. They've told us this change now for over a year. It's happening. Yeah. But I think for us, there's really no upside to sign up for it right away. If J- if July 15th is a deadline, we'll just keep doing what we're doing now. Yeah. And wait till July 15th. Yeah, I'm just... I'm just going to wait. Yeah. Uh, my Cottage. Uh, she is a... Um, she or he. Yeah. I think it's a she. This person is uh, on a f- forum and they pointed out that eBay has a new thing, which is kind of cool for people that do a local pickup. Mm. You know, it's always been like a bit of a of a gap, like a... Right. Where if you sell something on eBay for a local pickup, there is no way... To prove that they picked anyone it up. Anyone to prove that they got it, that they picked it up. It's just all, you know, and people are coming up with these like, well, bring your camera and like take a picture of them from their car with their like license plate. And, you know. Uh, right. So it says eBay is rolling out a proof of delivery feature. When the buyer pays online, he gets or she gets a QR code and a six digit number. Right. When he picks up. He shows a code to the seller who can scan it with his phone because it's only men who are selling there. Uh, and that will <laughs> then or she. indicate delivered in the shipping area. Don't right. want to get close enough to scan because they're sick with the virus. The buyer right. is also given a six-digit code, right. which he can then provide the seller. Right. And that, too, can be accepted as proof. So, so, so whatever code you right. have, you can be like... Yeah. Hey, this person, the secret code that I as a seller could have no access to unless the buyer gives it to me, right. put the code in. It's like a confirmation code you get texted to you or whatever. Yeah. And then and then eBay can be like, okay. I mean, this they is, pick, that's smart. This is super cool. And this is one Final. of those things where if it works, we have to give eBay credit for yeah. solving an issue that's been an issue for a long time. But, you know, we'll see. So it says... This is being rolled out, so not everyone may have it t- today. Also, at this time, this won't work if local pickup was not chosen by the buyer at the time of purchase. So, oh, so so if they chose priority mail and they're like, hey, I'm in the next town over. Can I come pick it up? Yeah, yeah. you're like, well, that kind of right. like changes things. but. Right. So, example, uh, item does not offer local pickup, buyer buys the item, but then notices, yeah, he lives in the same town. Right. As for local pickup, that won't be uh, available. So that's fine. I also wonder if it helps with metrics because mm. with local pickup, there was never a way to be like, this got in quotes shipped. Yeah. You would just mark it as shipped. Can you, did this, but. I felt this was possible. Can you, if you're a seller that's willing to let people pick up anything, Mm-hmm. Can you just have it as an option on everything? Yes, as so, well as shipping? so we have people that we buy from that are local ish, and they used to do that free local pickup, and then people in California oh, would yeah. be like, ah, oh, free local pickup, That's it's right. free shipping, yeah. and they're like, no, you need it, we have to cancel and like right. redo that, and they were like, this is a nightmare, so they <laughs> so they stopped doing that. But yes, you can. I okay. could say free local pickup on everything, and then everyone all over the world could just choose that and be like, you said free shipping. And yeah. you're like, yeah, if you live in the same zip code. <laughs> I love that that's the, the voice of the buyer. <laughs> that's what it yeah. feels like when you read those so, messages. <laughs> so uh, real quick, so it's not possible. So if you're willing to take that risk, is it possible yes. right now? Okay, so, so yeah. it's possible. If, you, if you're willing you to take, take the risk, risk right. of like most of your buyers just choosing local pickup. Because it says free. Because it says free, right. you know, and they're being whatever, right. sneaky uh, they think they think they're being sneaky because <laughs> yeah. um, it was really convenient because right. I would buy stuff on their store. I would just put it all in the cart and then it's like zero. You know, I'd right. be like, I'm local, you know, pay for it all, whatever. Right. And now I have to message them. Can you change this? Blah, blah, blah. Mm. But, you know, that's fine. But yeah, it's a weird system. Like you should be able to choose like. The local pickup area or something. So people in California are not choosing local pickup. That's interesting. Something. But, yeah. But well, how, how would you do that? Because I've shipped to people in two towns over and they don't care. They although to be fair, like I'm looking for a coffee m- 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 machine for a new cafe. And I'm looking to see if I could buy a nice one on eBay that is a used. Right. And I'm a little checking out ones in California. And they have local it's pickup. only free a little local pickup. Right. 
but I might be willing to buy it if it's a good deal. And then I figure out how like to you hire ship. a person yeah. to get shipped. Well, the, so in that situation, this is why eBay is kind of a weird beast. You would message those people and be like, look, I really want this. I'm going to have a, I'm going to figure out shipping with a U shipper. You guys right. don't have to deal with that. Right. Is that okay? Yeah. Instead of like, they're they're giving it to someone who's just walking away in the next town over. Yeah. But yeah. I like eBay local pickup. We have never had an issue. I yeah. mean the one issue it, we had was someone returned a chair. Yeah. <laughs> but but that was they never said they didn't get it or anything. Right. They were like, Yeah, I got it and I don't want it yeah. <laughs> after yeah. I got home four hours later. Yeah. And then Then he said, turned around and dropped it off. He was off. very upset with us. <laughs> But we say, fine, we'll take a, a return. I'll take it back. You just you have need to drive to drop all the way here. And he did. He was, uh, but whatever. Okay. Oh, God. Uh, let's do our numbers for the week. So uh, we sold 60 items. It felt like that. I was shipping a lot. I feel like we haven't sold this many items. For us, that's a lot of items. Like, I mean, that's almost 10 a day. It's a lot. Uh, you know. I was shipping a lot. do the math on that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> over, yeah. over eight items a day. Yeah. yeah. Almost 10. Yeah. Um, so we made $1,809.86. That's our gross sales, not including shipping. I love it. Or taxes. I, yeah. I That's great. Yeah. Thank I mean, God. That's good. Um, cost of item was about $130. Like, that's really our kind yeah. of, that's our equation as scavengers. Pay as little We're not as possible. Making, we aren't making tens of thousands of dollars, you know, in a week. But we also don't pay a lot for these items. Yeah. So it's very low risk, and that's what we like. Um, yeah, our, our helper, she doesn't start her full time job till the end of June. So we have her for another two months. And so we're going to yep. get her to do all kinds of good stuff for yeah, us. Yeah, I'm trying. And, uh, and I'm hoping we can convince her to like still do a little bit of work for us for some extra cash. I so. talked to her this week. Oh, really? Um, I didn't know this. Yeah, I guess I forgot to tell you. She has been coming to our office, but we'll like. I disinfect the office and then leave and then she comes and then I disinfect it after, you know, like it's like she has the office to herself and whatever. Um, But so I, I did actually speak to her in person. We were more than six feet apart. Um, And I was like, you know, I hope that maybe I can give you a bin every week and you just work on it when you have time during the week or whatever. And Mm -hmm. she's like, yeah, if I can still help you guys, I want to. So I don't know how it's going to work. She's going to be working full time, weird hours. Yeah, we'll see. I don't know. So we'll see see if that's a reality. I'm not not looking forward to having to find somebody new and train them because it's for us in our little small area. It's tough to find people who are looking for temporary, you know, kind of like um, flexible work without a lot of hours. Right. And that's what they want because of their lifestyle. Right, whatever they have to do. And that they're savvy enough to kind of do this kind of weird internet work and that we can trust them yep. and you know and that they uh, like know how yeah. to do this stuff and care yeah. and do so. their job <laughs> all those yeah. things it's uh, it's not easy okay yeah. um things we sold i mean we sold my favorite sale was a baby a little statue a baby peeing into a little bucket with a mouse on the bucket for $12 Occupied Japan. To someone in Latvia. And this person paid $25 to ship this $12 item. A peen baby to <laughs> Latvia. We will see. I mean, what, this is that, it, that should be an eBay commercial. Like, that is, <laughs> that's Look, the power of this. We you know? had, we had this, this big old bag of Occupied Japan porcelain miniatures. I was like, I need to just throw this in the garbage. Like, I just do not think it's worth anything. I don't want to go through it. I don't want to clean them. I don't want to look at them. I don't care. Um, I did do all those things. It's like one step above, like, little angels. It's one step above garbage. (laughs) Like, to me, that is one step above garbage. Angels aren't garbage, right? Come on. Well. Anyway, okay, so. So, but, you know, I was like. Somebody collects these little peeing baby things, yeah, I, I and they say, do because it sold overnight. I'm happy we got twelve bucks. I think we could have gotten more. I paid every it out. single look Terapeak because I've been using Terapeak. Have you, I mean, it's just on the research tab. It just shows you eBay sold for the so, last well, there's year. There's a category called peeing. No, babies. it's not. But 
the the highest price of those sold in the last year was yeah. nine ninety nine. Right. So I now have the highest price. Yeah. Could I have like, You're gonna my set fear the market. Right. Set the market of twelve dollars. My fear was that I was gonna say, I want twenty five dollars for this and sit on it for four years. Right. I was like which twelve dollars which I do for everything else, so which, I don't know why this was different. We just got a thirty dollar offer on like a set of baby I don't know what you, you call it. You don't it? understand that those it's are like, valuable. It's like a baby it's like a gown, it? a gown, but it's handmade. I think right. it's linen, and it's and like hand did embroidered. You want like one hundred and fifty dollars for it? Someone said thirty. I'm like, cool. Let's take no, thirty. No, You're no, like, no. no. This, this, this. It's like this hand embroidered lace, like um, baptism set or whatever. Mm. Cr- christen. Well, I don't know yeah. what it's called when babies right. get dipped in the water yeah. or whatever. Um, <laughs> one of those, uh, and it's handmade and it's all fancy and it's worth. Okay. More than $30. Yeah. So okay. let me be <laughs> determined. I mean, price. I think for anyone here in this, that's the interesting thing when you get into like long tail stuff. This is this is the deal. It's like the value is in the research and knowing yeah. and trusting your gut, but yeah. doing research and then taking a chance and being willing to be um, patient. You know, it's just like all of these things. It's not like, oh, it's an, it's an iPhone case. Yeah, these this always sell at $199. One dollar ninety nine cents. Right. Free shipping and not sell those all day. Anyway, um, yeah. one thing that also came in the box that we bought was something I'd never heard of, and it's, it's a kind of fun thing of history: cigarette silks. Cigarette silks and and tobacco inserts. Now, those silks, I think, were actually from like plug tobacco mm. or like loose tobacco, not like actual cigarettes. We, I had no idea this existed. I, I don't, I don't know how I knew they were called cigarette silks, mm. but I felt the fabric and I was yeah. like, this feels like silk and it has something about tobacco. So right. I'm going to search. And for so it. we kind of went down a rabbit hole where we were doing Google searches and learn the whole history. There was a time at the yeah. late 1800s, early 1900s where cigarette companies would put these these pieces of silk, you know, it's like the size silk, of a cigarette box. fabric, yeah. With, like, little images on it. It's uh, random. And they were collectible. Yeah. And and people would get them, and they would, like, sew, like... like quilts out of them. Blankets out of them. Like, right. you can look up cigarette silk quilts. Right. So we found several. In the I show. saw just... Yeah. Uh, I have an insert. It's, like, a little postcard thing. But then I have, like, five silks. Yeah. It's just one of those funny things where you're, like... I have no idea what this is, right. but like in all our scavenging, I never saw right. any of those once. Right. So it's funny when you come across something you've never seen. Um, okay, so that's not something we sold, but we I, I just thought that. that was interesting. We will. We, uh, the highest thing we sold was a faucet, like a yeah. sink saw for $190. Pretty nice. $190. I don't know how much we paid for that faucet because a lot of times those things were things that we thought we were going to use it's in a renovation. A Brizzo. It's a Brizzo. Yeah, so they're kind of fancy. We probably paid 20 yeah. bucks for it. Um, yeah, 20 to 30 Yeah, we bought it at... Uh, but I definitely sold it for a good price, yeah. so hopefully they... And then we sold a piece of artwork for $165, which happens to be in one of our rentals on the wall... Uh, it's been there for a long so, time. It was one of those items where I was like, I have had this for so long that I'm actually going to hang it in one of my rentals and put a really high price on it and just pull it out when it sells. And someone actually bought it. Someone actually so. bought it. So I actually have to go over there and get it. Yeah. Um, scavenge of the week. We did a little bit of online scavenging, not a whole lot, but um, mm, a little bit. Know, yeah. It's a, little. a nice little stream of stuff. Just got trickle of stuff. Customer issues. So we t- um, we talked about we sold our old sewing machine, mm-hmm. and exactly what we were concerned about has happened. Where the guy got it, he bought it for his wife, probably to make masks, and yeah. he says it works fine. But he says the what the, the needle assembly is, is loose. loose. And 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 yeah. to me, it just seems like it's probably error on his part because yeah. we had just had it refurbished. Yeah. You know? Well, the bummer thing is he opened an item defective not working um case i guess it's item not describe or defective and he says in his message this turns on and works great except this one piece seems loose and you're like okay well then maybe you need to get it serviced and so we a message him 
Yeah. Normally we wouldn't do this, but because it's so heavy and we don't really want it back, we were like, can we give you some money? It's for you to get it serviced. To get it a service. He hasn't someone, written back yet. Or someone teach you how to like operate it. Uh, yeah. So we'll see. Well, the, the, the issue is I need to accept the return no right. matter what. Right. Which I haven't done yet. I messaged him. So uh, I kind of just have to accept the return. Yeah, you do. Yeah. So I need to do that after this podcast. Yeah. Uh, things we learned in the forum. We talked about some stuff we've been having fun talking about. One thing, someone came on. She's in New Orleans and she got a Vero claim. Mm. Not just one Vero Ugh. claim. Like three of no. them within a short period of time. And a, a Vero is... I can look it up. It's like a it's like a copyright claim or yeah. something. Right? Verified rights owner right. program uh, that eBay has. And basically, I'm sure Amazon has this too in all yeah. sites. It's like a program to protect eBay yeah. from getting sued. Yep. So basically, they have this program where they're like, if you're a company and someone is selling something counterfeit, tell us. And we'll make them take it and down. And we'll just take it down. We don't have a judgment on it. We'll just right. do it. And then the buyer can contact you, know, you, you directly. And I think if you've sold on eBay long enough, we've all gotten a Vero claim. For the dumbest stuff. Like some companies are a lot more aggressive than others. Yeah. Like John Deere. Or Velcro. Velcro is another one. Look, I, I talked to a friend this week and they were like, yeah, I had to like go onto my other eBay account, which was just my buying account because I got three Velcro strikes and they wouldn't let me right. um, sell anything for like five days right. or li- list anything. You could sell stuff. So this person who Such came on the forum and was concerned because she says she depends on her eBay store for income, you know, they put her on suspension. Right. However, I always point out, it's not suspension like your store is like gone. You can't put anything you can't new in list your store. Things. But people can still buy things yes. from you. So it's not like total You're not shut, shut down. down. And and the, and that's good. Uh, we ha- I don't think we've ever been suspended like that, but we have gotten a Vero. And, yes. you know, they don't publish how many you're allowed to get. <laughs> but, you know, if you get them every so often, it's not a big deal. It's just like it's, it's when you get a bunch all in a row. Uh, and the problem is, is that it's so arbitrary. You never know what right? it's going to be. It, uh, people were getting bureaus for the word onesie because mm, yeah. apparent, you know, like a little baby onesie because right. that's a trademark name that nobody right. knew about. Yeah, or a uh, or shelf elf. Um, oh my god, an elf on a shelf. Yeah, or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, oh, so my. really, there's not much that you can do, and it is just it's one of those things where like the items that you've been caught for. Just take them down. Don't relist them. And then just keep going and just hope it's okay. And yeah, it's... And she said she actually contacted some of the companies. Yeah, sure. And I think one company, I think it was Chrysler or something, was willing to like take the Vero off. Okay, well, but that's good. I've never heard of that. It just seems like a lot of work too, but... Yeah, uh, right. Anyway, just... They, they so I don't have any answer for anybody just to know well, that. Well, I think what's hard is now... Does eBay ever... I've had eBay send a warning before. I don't know if it's a Vero warning or some other kind of warning. Hey, the title of the... I think I had the word Rubbermaid in something, Mm. which they truly were Rubbermaid items, but I don't know. I guess I wasn't supposed to sell those or something. They warned me and I changed the Mm. name and they were like, okay, they're plastic containers. You're like, okay, great. Yeah. Like I didn't get a Vero. I just got a warning. So I don't know. That happens sometimes. Yeah. Also, I don't know. I mean, it's just know if you are selling now as a business, just be careful. If you get one, take down the item oh, and then just. Down, yeah. But there's really no way to kind of protect yourself because I think anyone, any company can start a Vero claim over anything, yes. whether it's right or not. And eBay does not get involved. They do not. They will just you take know. make you take it down. Yeah. Now, if you. This this happened to me. Someone stole my photos off one of my listings and they were selling the item as if it was their own. I actually did a Vero claim on them. That was yeah. the only way – because I, I called eBay and I was like, how yeah. do I report this person using my photos for a listing that I have? They're like, open a Vero and that's what I did. So it's the same process. Right. Okay. The, uh, no calls or questions this week. You can uh, give us a call at – Five four zero four zero seven eight four eight six. You have three minutes to leave a message, please.
keep it to three minutes. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm the editor. And also, you can email us an audio file. The email is thescavengerlife at gmail.com. And you can, of course, find us at scavengerlife.com slash forum if you want to come and hang out with us. Uh, you just join up, and then you email us, and then we let you in, and we let everybody in who's nice to us. <laughs> uh, I mean, yes. we actually we allow anyone, even if you're mean to us, too, for the most part. <laughs> come on. Come on in. Uh, Wednesdays, you can come to the blog, and you can see Steve show what he sold that week. And again... And the dogs and cats. Yeah. <laughs> They're so cute. And if you're into, uh, you know, like, vintage old stuff, he's your guy. He's super sure. knowledgeable, and he's smart about how he sells. I have put a link to Broad Porch Coffee on the sidebar of right. the site. Yeah. So if you are still in lockdown, which most of you are, and you need more coffee, order from Broad Porch. Right before kind of the real uh, lockdown, I think it was at the end of March, we went and mm-hmm. bought, uh, what, 10 pounds? 10 pounds of coffee. And we were like, oh, this is going to last we'll so long. Forget. I think we... I think we we drink a pound of coffee a week. You know? I mean, um, I believe it. Yeah, and maybe even a, l- a little bit more. So, uh, so we need to re up from them <laughs> soon. Probably at the end of the month. Yeah. So we would love. Yeah, like if you kind of made it your go to, um, and they even have like a sub- subscription where they'll I'll send you a pound every month or however often you want. Yep. Uh, and he's Do it. A shipping deal right now. Anyway. Uh, we are ending this podcast. In three, two, one, bye. bye.